Noise cancelling seems to be really simple, almost too simple, so I'm going to try and create it myself. But I am no expert when it comes to electronics, so most of this is just going to be guessing. Alright, let's do this. Sound is a series of pressure waves which propagate through air. Consider a constant pitch sound wave like this. The darker regions represent areas of high pressure, and lighter regions represent low pressure. If we pause time, we can see that the pressure varies with the distance away from the sound source. And by plotting the pressure as a function of distance, a waveform is created, enabling us to visualise what pressure waves look like, since we can't actually see them. The shape of a sound wave differs for different sound sources. By connecting a microphone to an oscilloscope, you can see what the wave shape for a particular noise is. For example, the sound wave a piano makes looks like this. Now it gets interesting when pressure waves meet. Here we can see two different waves travelling in the opposite direction, meeting in the middle. As the waves overlap each other, their pressures simply sum up, and the sound you would hear if you were stood at this point would be louder. If one of the pressure waves is lower than the surroundings, the resultant wave is quieter. So two constant pitch sound waves moving in the same direction will overlap in the same way, summing up their pressures, creating a new wave shape which is the combined sound of both original waves, which is shown here by the red line. If you can generate a sound wave with the exact same frequency and amplitude as the original wave, and deliberately overlap it with the original wave so that the high pressure regions overlap with the low pressure regions, then both waves will perfectly cancel each other out, and the resulting pressure will be constant, and there will be silence. You can actually pretty easily experiment with noise cancelling using speakers. If you face two speakers in the same direction and play the same pitch from both of them, the sound waves from each speaker will overlap, and where the two waves are exactly in phase, the volume is noticeably louder but where the waves are exactly anti-phase, the volume is noticeably quieter. When walking around in front of the speakers, you should be able to hear the sound getting louder and quieter. To demonstrate it, I connected a microphone to the oscilloscope and moved it in front of some speakers, and as you can see, the interference between the two speakers has a very big effect on the volume. So how to get a speaker to actively cancel noise? A speaker generates sound by physically oscillating its surface, which pushes the air next to it, creating the pressure waves. The oscillation is caused by a coil of wire within the moving surface, next to a permanent magnet inside the speaker. When a voltage is applied across the ends of the wire, a magnetic field is built up around the coil, and it's either attracted or repelled from the magnet. To oscillate the speaker surface, an alternating current must be used, which repeatedly changes the direction of the current, in turn pushing and pulling the surface. In order to produce a sound wave which cancels the noise in the air, the speaker needs to be supplied with a current of the exact opposite waveform as the ambient noise. So, a microphone will be used to listen to the sound, generate a voltage signal in the exact same shape as the sound wave, and that signal can be used to drive the speaker. I'll be using an electric microphone simply because it's cheap and easy to use. So, a microphone absorbs sound waves in the air and converts them into an electrical signal. An electric microphone uses a capacitor to do this, where one of the plates is free to move. The capacitor plates are charged up by applying a voltage across it, and when a sound wave enters the microphone, one of the plates absorbs the wave energy and gets pushed towards or away from the other plate. This creates a very small change in voltage across the ends of the microphone, which can be used as a signal to control the current to the speaker. So, a microphone produces a voltage, and a speaker requires a voltage to generate sound. However, a microphone can't deliver anywhere near enough current to power a speaker. So I need something that can amplify current. Right, I know that a transistor changes its resistance based on a voltage, essentially a voltage-controlled resistor, where the current through the transistor is proportional to the gate voltage. So with that in mind, I connected the speaker in series with the transistor. The signal from the mic is offset by a DC voltage, so I connected it to the transistor with the capacitor to remove that offset. I then added a new DC offset to correctly bias the transistor. With this setup, the sound signal from the mic is sent to the transistor and directly varies the current through the speaker, which will make a sound. Now, this did work, but it's not good for the speaker, because the transistor is always letting a current flow. And let's just say, speakers don't like DC current. So, before I break anything, I decided to buy a power amp instead. I got the TDA2030A amplifier module. It's just the first one that came up when I googled it. But because the mic delivers only millivolts, I also found a preamp circuit design on the internet to boost the really weak signal from the mic. So the mic picks up a noise, sends a tiny signal to the preamp, the preamp boosts the voltage of the signal, and actually this particular circuit also inverts the signal too. And finally, the power amp delivers the high current signal to the speaker, which generates an antiphase wave. And hopefully, this setup should be able to cancel noise, like this. So, I built the circuit on a breadboard and stuck all the components to a piece of card. I did originally stick the microphone to the back of the speaker, but when it was that close it kept getting loads of feedback and sounded absolutely horrible, so I put it on top of a glue stick at a bit of a distance away. It's still facing the same direction though, so it should work just fine. And now to test it. 
On the left, there's a speaker to create a noise wave. On the right, I've got a crocodile clip holding a microphone connected to the oscilloscope, and in the middle, the device which should hopefully cancel noise. When the device is off, the microphone on the right should only be able to hear the noise created by the speaker on the left. But when the device is turned on, the interference between the two waves should cancel the noise, and the microphone shouldn't be able to hear anything. And therefore, any waves shown on the oscilloscope should disappear after the noise cancelling device is turned on. So, I included a button on the breadboard to turn it on and off. What the heck? It actually works! Sick! I mean, it's not perfect, but this is good. The sound has definitely been reduced in volume, which is exactly what I wanted, but there's still a waveform in the background. Now, this is likely because the microphone is not in the exact right place, and therefore it's hearing the sound either before or after the sound has reached the speaker, so when the cancelling wave is generated, it doesn't perfectly overlap with the original wave, which explains the resulting wave. It's pretty cool to watch the waveform as you move the microphone around, too. It distorts in real time, and you can literally see the interference between the waves. Incredible. However, it could equally have been caused by the circuit design. Bandpass filters and other things, I don't know, cause the output signal to be shifted slightly out of phase with the input signal. I decided to check this by measuring the output from the mic and the output from the power amp. So with the two signals on the same plot, I can bring the waveforms to the same size and you can see there's a huge phase shift. The optimal position of the microphone was also different for each frequency I tested, and that supports the theory that there are bandpass filters messing with the phase shift, because the phase shift would be different for every frequency. Unfortunately, that would mean that with this circuit, noise cancelling is only really achievable at selected frequencies. But I still wanted to hear what it actually sounded like, so I found an old pair of headphones to house my circuits. This is the size of speaker you'd typically get in a pair of headphones, and it won't need as much power as the bigger speaker, so I switched to a smaller power amp, which takes up less space. It's the LM386. I pretty much copied the example in the datasheet to connect it up, and ended up with this circuit. I soldered it to a couple of perf boards, but it's still too big for the old housing, so I designed a bigger one to be 3D printed. Yeah, this is going to look pretty ridiculous now. <laughs> anyway, let's take a quick moment to admire the absolute beauty of this machine. Anyway, so I printed the new housing and threw it all together. It fits quite nicely, actually. So this is where I discovered the numerous limits of this design. The device works fine in the open, but when confined to a closed space, the housing must be acting as a resonator or something, because there was suddenly loads of feedback as soon as I put it together, and I had to significantly reduce the gain of the power amp to stop it. And in doing so, the noise cancelling was also reduced. There's also a general noise in the circuit, which means even after the noise has been cancelled, you can still hear this. And because they're so big, any sounds coming in at an angle aren't properly cancelled either. <laughs> These look ridiculous, but... <laughs> However, in spite of all that, there's still a noticeable reduction in volume when you hold it to your ear. And I'm going to count that as a success anyway. I'll try and capture it with my mic to see what it sounds like. I took the circuits and the speaker back out of the housing to try and record the best cancelling. Okay, so here we have the noise cancelling device between the sound source and... The microphone there. At the moment, it's connected to the oscilloscope. Well, there's my voice. Hello! <laughs> Sick. Uh, and then I'll plug this into the microphone so that I can connect it up to the camera and you can hear the noise cancelling. And now, again, but with the microphone plugged into the camera. Interesting, so there's clearly a lot more that would go into a proper pair of noise cancelling headphones. You can hear there's still a bit of a buzz after the noise is cancelled, which might be vibrations going through the crocodile clips, I don't know, it could be anything. But the sound does get quieter, it's not perfect, but I'm happy with it anyway. However, I wouldn't recommend strapping them to your ears, just in case there's any feedback.